I'm going to uh, show how to um, to download and install the Apache Tomcat web container as it's described on this web page. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the Apache Tomcat website. Interestingly enough, there's this <coughs> announcement that Tomcat 7 is released. This is the first stable release of the Tomcat 7 branch. So this is now a release um, state release and uh, it's today. So this was just just announced uh, today and uh, it's amazing. It's 2 o'clock in the morning actually so it's just uh, just now. And uh, so I think what I'm going to do is go for this and um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the download link, and I'm a little concerned about uh, bandwidth. I hope that we're, there's enough bandwidth to to retrieve this. Let's take a look. So they have mirrors here. I could actually go to a mirror site. So that's 7.06. Let me see if I can uh, find a place that's uh, close to me. All right, I just I'm, I changed the the mirror site here. So after you select a site, you click on change, and uh, then what we're going to do is um, I I'm going to download a let's see there's a README here. I'm going to download this file here. It's going pretty quickly. Let's uh, take a look at that. And uh, I'm going to extract that. I'm going to put that extracted folder in a location that I use for installed software. And there it is. I'm just going to change the name. <coughs> That's not necessary. It's just my convention. So we've retrieved it. Let's check the instructions. So I, I have uh, the older version of Tomcat listed here. What I'll do is, uh, after I verify that this runs, I will uh, change this this to uh, to the version that I'm downloading right now. Uh, notice I did not retrieve the, the the system that provides the Windows service installer. I'm not going to run Tomcat as a service. I'm just going to give this a try. I haven't tested this yet so I'm going to go back to here and under bin let's uh, let's see if we can start it up. So startup.bat Let's give it a try. Sorry, that's not going to work. We need to um, open a a command prompt for this. I'm going to copy that. I'll cd to there. And uh, let's see, what was it? Startup, right? Let's give that a try. the Java home nor the JRE home environment variable is defined and we need to set one of those so let's go ahead and do that so Java home or JRE home so one of the two let's see what did I recommend on the on the site we'll just so I don't have to rewrite the page um, I don't see that I have anything about that So it it looks like what we need to do is set this um, either one of these two. So let's we'll set the uh, Java Home. So I'm going to um, to show you how to do that. Uh, so the uh, what we need to do is go into the control panel and um, we're going to set what's called an environmental variable. And let's find uh, how we do that. I don't think maybe it's in there. Here it is. System. 
and uh, just click on system here advanced system settings and here we have a button environment variables we'll set that and I'm the only user on this so let's go ahead and, and create a new variable here it's called uppercase java underscore home it is um, I believe it's case sensitive I'm not sure I actually I don't remember exactly but just to be safe let's make that um, all in uppercase letters now we need to give the path to the java home uh, so we need to locate that so I'm going to open up this windows explorer let's go ahead and look at try to find where java was installed and I think that's under Oracle these days, or though here it is, JRE and then Java. So this JRE is, um, I believe, may have been installed at a different time. Here's the JDK. Uh, so we're going to use that as our Java home. Uh, we could have used this other one here as well. This would have been all right as well. I believe. And uh, so let's try it with this one here. So we're going to basically copy that path and uh, set that here. So now that's that's an environment variable. Now when we from this point forward what happens when we start a, a, a command prompt or a terminal window here that um, that the that that environmental variable be s will be set. However, this this terminal window we created before we did that setting. So if I if I echo out the value of Java underscore home, there shouldn't be anything there. So as you can see, it's blank. We need to create. <coughs> we need to restart the terminal window. And uh, let's try that echo command again. Java underscore home. As you can see, it's now set. So we don't need this uh, anymore. Uh, we want to, so we can close this. And um, this is the, the bin folder of uh, Apache Tomcat. What I'll do is CD to there. And then we'll try startup again. Startup.bat. There we go. Let's unblock that. Looks good. This looks like it opened up a new window. What happens if we exit that? That looks good. This is still running. We might need that open, by the way, but uh, just to see how that works. So now to test, we need to go to here, as you can see on the web page there. And uh, I'll open up a new window. So this is localhost. It's a local machine, port 8080. And there it is. It's running. And right, let's go back to the web page. Looks, uh, looks good. Uh, there's some notes on some issues about Vista. If you um, start Tomcat as a service and so on, there's. If you have problems, you can take a look at those notes. Configuring the firewall. If you have issues related to your port being blocked, you could have a, uh, a running security software. I am not running any security software, uh, so that software may actually um, not uh, disable Tomcat from binding to. Uh, two of the ports that it tries to bind to. It's uh, port 8080 and also I believe it's uh, 8009 and I don't mention that here. Uh, this is opening 8080 the outside world if you want outside people to connect to you. Anyway, let's, um, that's, that's for your reading. Here is a section on the manager application and we're going to need to, uh, to look at this. So let's see what happens. This is the URL. Also, you can get to that through this uh, this page right here, Manager Application. It needs a username and password. 
that's the issue and we need to stop we need to set those um, so let's uh, let's let's um, figure out the password to the manager application now this uh, application is running here. As you can see, this terminal window is is um, is displaying the logging messages. These these messages, by the way, are also written to the file system. I'm going to leave this. This is uh, this is running. We we correctly set our environment variables, so I'm going to uh, close that. And uh, now what I'm going to do is let's go back to this bin folder and uh, we're going to shut down the server so we're not just going to kill the uh, this window we could do it like that that would that would be a messy way to shut it down we want a clean shutdown so go back to the uh, to the not to the eclipse folder but to the uh, tomcats uh, bin folder and uh, go ahead and shut it down like right there so the shutdown not bad I just double click on that and you'll notice that uh, it's now saying it's stopping Catalina, that was a, a name, another name for Tomcat. So that seemed to work nicely. So let's go ahead and open up a, um, well, let's do that later. There's a some configuration that we need to take care of. It's in this conf folder, and it's uh, right here called Tomcat Users. Let's go ahead and edit that. Uh, it's open with, uh, let's see, WordPad. And check I'm recording yep so in here this is the um, that manager application uh, uh, the login credentials for the manager application are stored in here so basically we need to have a, um, a role looks like they may have changed things a little bit well, there's the note right there. No user by default, no user is included in the manager GUI role required to operate manager HTML web application. Uh, if you wish to use this app, you must define such a user. The username and password are arbitrary. So let's go ahead and do that. There is no user included in this role. So let's let's define that role. So you should see this these these roles and users are in a comment block which starts here and ends there so we'll just leave those alone but these are not uh, these are not in uh, in effect so we need a role called manager GUI I'll paste that in there and now we need to uh, to create a user with that role so the user I'm gonna make the username and I this corresponds to the book I'm gonna call it admin uh, the password is going to be admin. That's obviously a weak password, but the application won't be open to the outside, so we're safe with that password. And the role is uh, manager GUI. I'm going to save that file. It's a text file. Close it. And uh, let's go ahead and run Tomcat again. Uh, so I'll need to go into this bin folder. And uh, let's go ahead and and start up um, another instance of this uh, Windows Explorer. Let's go ahead. Up. Oh, we don't need that. We need a terminal window. You know what? We don't need a terminal window. We could just double click right here on on startup.bat. And that will create an, an instance of this um, console window. Looks pretty good. And now let's try to access the um, this uh, manager application again. So I'm going to just uh, reload this page. This is good. This is running. Manager application. Username. We set it to admin. The password is admin. The login. And now we're in. And this this web interface is uh, shows uh, the running application so we have uh, an application called docs examples host manager manager and so on so actually this app this application shows the running application so you see 
it actually shows itself as a running web application. Docs looks useful. This is uh, the documentation. This is also available online, as you can see. This is the version of the documentation that's online. Tomcat 7.0. This is the version of the documentation that's, that's locally stored. So, what we have locally through our local host being served from our local file system, this is the snapshot of the documentation that uh, that we got when we downloaded the um, the zip file. This documentation that's retrieved through Tomcat will be uh, probably or possibly modified um, over time. Uh, so these two might not match exactly. Alright, so we just talked about the documentation. That's this section here. Now we're going to uh, take a look at these log files. So the the book um, suggests the the installation of this uh, log watcher program. That's a, a that that's a plugin for Eclipse. Let's go to that site, which is here, and we don't need this. And we'll see. We don't need the documentation right now. So here it is. We can download the plugin here. You know what, I want to check to see if they've changed things. Install usage. So basically we need to unzip the zip file in the plugins directory and restart Eclipse. And that's that. So in fact we do need to go here. And let's go ahead and get this. This is, it's an old plugin. This looks like the one we want. There it is. Good. Looks like we got that. Got that pretty quickly. So I'm going to extract that. And uh, it shows a plugins folder right there. And it's going to just going to cut that that folder. And let's go to where we have Eclipse which is, uh, and that doesn't matter where you put it, just put it wherever makes sense for your system. I put it here, and you can see there's a plugins folder right there, and this is where they go. Actually, I'm just going to paste it right in there. There it is. Now when we start Eclipse, this, uh, this plugin will be available. Okay, that's good. That's done. And uh, so we're going to need to uh, to test that. Let's go ahead and give that a give that a test. So let's start up Eclipse, which is in here. Actually, what I did was I I I, I pinned that to the to the start menu, I, and now you would unpin it. So that means uh, I can just launch it from here. And Tomcat is currently running. This is uh, the log that's being written out to the terminal window. This is also be written, being written to uh, one or more files. And let's go ahead and go into that workspace. It's loading up. And what we're going to do here is... Um, this is called the, the the Java perspective. That's what we're working in right now. And we're going to look at uh, let's just see if I can remember this under uh, Window um, Show View. So the Grayski plugin is uh, can be accessed as a view. Let's go down to Other, and uh, here it is under Log Files. Going to open that up. There it is, Log Watcher. Going to select that. You can see it's right here. Now if I double click on that tab, it gives me a, kind of a full screen mode here. And these are other tabs in, inside this area here, this, this panel. And so this is the log watcher view. 
Now here it's a create a new uh, watcher. So you can, what the log watcher does is it lets you look at um, uh, files, log files that are being written to. So let's go ahead and browse for that. So we need to uh, navigate to where we have uh, Tomcat installed. So I'm just going to go on my system. I put it in this location. And there it is right there. And so we want to go into the logs folder. And here is the here's the main log file right there, Catalina dot something dot log. Let's go ahead and open that. And you'll see it's showing us the contents of that file. And uh, this this is this this is the initialization when Tomcat gets uh, started up. And you can see the final line is server startup in 681 milliseconds. So that's good. We can open up other. You see this is a this is a tabbed window here, but inside this window is another tab, so we can actually look at the other other uh, log files as well. There's there's a lot of them. That one's empty. Let's go ahead and just look at them all right now because uh, we don't know which one is important to us. So it is kind of an inconvenience uh, working with Tomcat. There, there's a way to... This is not a log file. This is a... It is a log file. It shows the access log. Hmm. Might turn that one off. Here's this. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it though. That's uh, showing the access log. Things that are... what what has been requested. So this uh, this can get filled up pretty quickly if you requesting a lot of um, accesses to the to web applications in your server. This is the log file for this specific uh, application, the manager application. That's the thing that uh, we configured the username and password for. This is the log file for that shows the each individual request that the browser is making to the server. And this is a log file that's related to uh, what's called a virtual host. And uh, this is a log file for an application called the host manager. I think we can turn that off. This is the main log file. Now I'm going to open this one as well. So here's our, our manager application log file. Now what I'm going to do is basically just erase, clear these. It doesn't erase the f contents of the file, it just erases what's displayed in this window. Now take a look at this. Let's go ahead and uh, let's experiment with this. Here's the access log. Now if I, if I go to this uh, local host again, we should be able to, there it is, just go to localhost. We should see that uh, something appears in the access log. Once again, this is what we're looking at. Just gonna just gonna just take a look at that. Let's see if we go to this uh, localhost. Let's see if anything gets written out to this access log. Nothing. There should be something there. Oh, there it is. Get. This is uh, slash. This is the top level. That's in fact what we, what we did. It doesn't show a slash here, but it should. We'll give another request. Let's see this pop up again. So you can see the log gets written out very slowly. Or maybe it's just that the um, that log watcher is is. Um, perhaps um, polling the, the file um, at some kind of regular interval like every 10 seconds or so. So if we look at the let's go to this manager application and you'll see that oh, manager application has been requested here. So this shows us the access log. It could be fairly um, uh, useful. Here's now if we look at the log file for the manager application we see that as we're accessing things in the manager application that um, some logs are being written out. So for instance we can um, we can 
undeploy the examples application. Let's go ahead and do that. It shows us that that, that application has been undeployed. There should also be something in this main log file as you can see it's undeploying the examples application. That's a major event to undeploy uh, an application. Alright, let's see what else we might need to do. <coughs> I'm going to go back to the web page. We've looked at now log files, log watcher installation, we've done that. Understanding class loading, you, you should read that. This is called a deep restart of Tomcat. Sometimes um, the, 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 the Tomcat state, which is cached in, in some files, uh, gets uh, corrupted and that we need to clean out uh, all of the cache state that's, uh, that Tomcat will access. So this is the procedure. Let's go ahead and test that procedure. We're going to stop Tomcat and um, watch what goes on in the in the watch windows and we're going to delete uh, the files under this location delete this work folder and then rest and then start Tomcat again so let's go ahead and take a look at that so let's stop Tomcat and remember how do you stop Tomcat you have to go to this bin folder this is the clean way to do it and let's uh, let's run shutdown if you're on Linux or Macintosh you're going to run this shell script but on Windows you'll run the this batch file. Let's go ahead and run that. That will in fact uh, shut it down. And um, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the log file here. This is the main log file. It's uh, stopping the protocol handler. That's in fact a, a shutdown. Let's go ahead and clear these. It doesn't delete the contents of the files, it just clears our view of them here. Alright, let's let's carry out the deep restart procedure. We stop Tomcat, uh, close all log files. Uh, that's because we're going to delete the log files. So in fact, uh, we're going to need to close these. This is the close the watcher, so I'm just going to go ahead and close all of these log files and um, let's come back to the web page we're going to delete the logs directory we're going to delete it says delete the files within that directory I think we can also delete the whole directory itself this is delete the work directory start Tomcat again let's go ahead and do that so we will go to um, to this bin folder we don't delete anything in there go into we'll just delete the logs folder and we'll delete this uh, work folder. See the work folder's got this um, just to, sh to show you there uh, this is these are the applications that are running. This is the root application and it's just got some data in there that's been cached and it is in fact sometimes gets corrupted so <coughs> when you're very stuck and you're not sure what's going on uh, you can always try what I'm what I call a deep restart. So I'm going to delete that folder there we go. Now let's go into the bin folder again, start up Tomcat. You'll see that uh, in fact there is no work folder, there is no log folder, and, but those will be created when we start Tomcat. So let's see, let's find this uh, startup.bat. Let's uh, take a look at that. And let's, let's, let's check that. There's the logs folder, there's the works folder. And you can see in the logs folder you've got all these these files have now been created. It's a little inconvenient when you do that. You have to reopen these uh, these log files. Let's just do that one. Here's the main log file. Shows the server start up here. So that is, uh, and I'll clear that. That's a that's a deep restart of Tomcat. 